I would like to share an account of a 66 year old businessman who had a fall and suffered a brain injury involving a subdural hemorrhage, subarachnoid hemorrhage and a secondary hypoxic injury. Following surgery, he was in the ICU for a period of one month. He was disoriented to time, place and people and he had severe speech impediments as well as memory and attention deficits, poor fine motor skills and imbalance while walking. He required assistance in all his activities of daily living which include bathing, dressing, eating and walking. His instrumental activities of daily living such as managing medications and traveling, um, also finances were managed by his family members. The approach for neuropsychological rehabilitation is usually goal-oriented. An assessment is conducted to aid in the formation of these goals. Assessments provide information about the person's strengths, cognition, emotions, behavior, and psychosocial functioning. Based on the objective as well as subjective information, SMART goals, long-term and short-term, are then decided. Based on the SMART goals, different goals were formulated in different domains. The first one included the orientation. Orientation was divided into two parts, temporal, which included the day, date, month, year, time and season, and the topographical, which included the state, city, country and area in which the gentleman was based. A whiteboard was used to prevent confusion and increase accuracy of the answers. The second domain was the neurocognitive functioning, which started with basic cognitive functions such as attention and memory. Over a period of four months, using progressive measures as well as objective scores and video feedback, it was found that there was a significant improvement in gentlemen's sustained as well as selective attention, as well as immediate delayed recall and remote memory. The fine motor skills were enhanced using different line drawings, play-doh and finger dexterity measures. Based on the progress, the goals were revised including more complex neurocognitive activities, neurobehavioral functioning which included impulsivity, disinhibition, emotional functioning which included anger outbursts and sadness and lastly insight and awareness. Planning activities, sequencing and analysis, complex attention which included divided attention as well as memory continued to be the focus. In the neurobehavioral domain, anger and impulsivity issues were addressed using different paper pencil tests along with emotion recognition and regulation measures. In order to enhance awareness and insight, Socratic questioning, video feedback was used. It was found that over a period of time, the gentleman moved from intellectual awareness to anticipatory awareness, reaching the most optimal level of functioning. He was clearly able to define the cause of the injury as well as the symptoms that he was currently facing. Using objective measures, regular check-ins as well as objective scores and feedback from the family as well as the gentleman himself highlights that he was able to reach the optimal level of functioning in different domains including psychosocial, neurocognitive, neurobehavioral as well as emotional functioning. Towards the end, he was able to maintain his routine, included exercise twice a week and the sessions then progressed from home visits to him independently visiting the clinic along with activities of daily living including bathing, eating, or dressing, he was completely independent towards the end. A traumatic brain injury affects the entire family system. Following this unexpected event, the family members are required to make multiple decisions regarding the person's medical care as well as taking on some of the responsibilities that the person had before the injury. This involves a lot of work on the family members part as, the, as they transition into the role of a caregiver.
Keeping this in mind, our neuro rehabilitation plan involves sessions for the family members so that we can take steps to ensure people know what their roles and responsibilities are as well as prevent caregiver burnout. Being a caregiver is a long-term process. Therefore, it is vital that we have a plan in place to prevent caregiver burnout and overwhelm. And this will include seeking professional help as well as a self-care plan for yourself. It's important that you reach out at the right time so that it doesn't become a burdensome process.